Hello, and thank you for joining me for another ITY video with top Australian IT executives. Today I have with me Tyler Harris. He is the director and founder of ArmorCard, which is a wireless skimming and RFID snooping protective device. Welcome to the program, Tyler. Thanks, Alex. Thanks for having me. So look, before we start about exactly what ArmorCard is, tell us about RFID and its history. Okay, well RFID or radio frequency identification as it's known, um, is a technology that originally started as a Cold War tool, a spy tool, essentially. Yeah. Um, and what it was, was that it was uh, back in post-World War II, um, the Russians gave the American Embassy a beautiful wooden plaque that they sit on the back of the embassy wall. Yeah, behind the uh, behind ambassador. The, uh, yep. yeah, yeah. And whenever there was a meeting, uh, they'd sweep the room as they do every day. All the, for looking for bugs. Yeah, looking yeah. for bugs. Yeah. Never found anything. And yeah. what would happen was there'd be a Russian, uh, Russian van sitting out on the street outside the embassy. When a meeting was on, they would point a high-powered RFID reader at the shield on the wall, the yeah. wooden shield, and it would fire up the chip and yep. start sending back all the, all the vocal from the meeting, yeah, the audio. <laughs> so that's where it originally started. Yep. And then it moved, the technology moved through into the 70s, I guess, into inventory tracking. So where, where you can track your goods, coming, whether it be coming, your bag coming through the airport or your goods coming through FedEx or what have you. Yeah. So it's Stop, an inventory so I mean, tracking. People like uh, Gillette with all the shavers and razors wanted to know which giant collection of boxes their package was. Exactly. And then in the, in the 90s, it moved to embedding chips into your animals. Mm -hmm. So you know when you go to the bed and they've got a little chip, if they get lost, they know that it's you. Yeah. So it started to be used as for that. And then basically in the 2000s or early 2000s, it started to be used in, uh, I guess, this, they started to look into things like clothing, mm -hmm. um, into retail. So could you imagine if you've got a RFID chip embedded in your shoe or a jumper that you that you purchased from that store, next time you came in there, they knew your size and color. Right. So they could serve up ads based on what your previous yeah, I remember size. remember them talking about that. Do you want yeah. to that? So that's, how, that's where it's come from. And as we know now in the last probably five, three to five years, it's been coming more, it's been coming more into our lives by way of payments. Yep. So you think of your, I guess your pay pass. Yeah, let me just zoom in on that. When people probably know the logo, but yeah, that's yep, pay the pay pass. pass yep. Or even Visa's pay wave. Yeah, that's right. So, Basically, it's, it's become, I guess, a tool for contactless payments. Yeah. And that's where we know it. Now, most people don't even know that they've got this technology in there, but if you've got one of those cards, you've already got this technology, and that's where we are with this technology now, and it's only gonna roll out more into our lives. Think of the e-way tags when you go through the, the tolls, same technology. Yeah. Um, so yes, it's here to stay. So what are the dangers of RFID skimming and how easy is it to skim this information wirelessly? Okay, so with radio frequency identification, it's, think of it like uh, a FM radio wave. Mm -hmm. It can go through walls, it can go through clothing, it can, you know... It, like a TV signal as well. Yep, yeah, exactly. So the, the, the risk of that is, is that your data is transmitted wirelessly via your via reader. So when you go and pay at, with your tap and go card, yep. you just hold your card near it, it's talks to the chip in your card and it says, hi, I'm a Visa card, here's my credit card number, thank you for paying. Charge me, yeah. Correct. Yeah. So the, 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 the fatal flaw with this technology is that anyone, and I mean anyone, can go online and buy an RFID reader for under $50 on eBay, yeah. have a smartphone, NFC enabled, which is near field communication, which is the same as RFID, but you have to be closer, yeah. um, which most phones these days do have, yeah. um, and download a free app online turn their phone into a skimming device or turn their uh, connect their reader, an RFID reader, to a laptop and start skimming you from a distance. Now, normally what happens is that you have to be very close to the reader, but, but by using a computer and using the right software and some sort of antenna, you can actually do long distance Correct. skimming. Correct, and I, I recently saw and I read an article about a guy um, connecting his laptop with a router, mm -hmm. wireless router, yeah. to his laptop. He's got the software, done it, got the, got the free software off online on how to do it, and he could skim people from meters away. Yeah. So the risk is, is that just because you may not use your tap and go card at the thing, if you've got it in your wallet, you can, you are at risk of getting your data. And sent. there's no encryption, it's just, is it just being broadcast, in, it's plain well, text? Look, there is your credit card, we can pull off your credit card, anyone can pull off your credit card number, your uh, name, your uh, your uh, expiry date, and there's even programs now that, have, that even uh, capture your random CCV. Right. So it records it like a transaction, you just replay it through your phone. So it can get everything that it needs 
everything that someone needs to skim your data. And yes, the banks are doing a great job, they encrypt stuff, but there are these apps showing you how easy it is. And with, I guess, these cards and with these details, yes, Australia may be pretty good with their, with their, with their safety, mm -hmm. but you look at Asia or you look at other developing countries, they don't even ask for a CCV or any of those numbers. You can just go, here's the credit card number, here's the expiry date, and bang, you're in. It. So, it, you know, a lot of this crime can come, it's an invisible crime. I mean, yeah. you don't know when you get skimmed, but it, it goes offshore. Yeah. They might not be using it here. The criminals are sending it off school, uh, offshore. The And then you get a phone call from the bank saying, hey, we just had a transaction in, you know. That's right. Singapore, and then obviously wherever, you're, you're covered. They yeah. cover you. That's part of what the banks do because they realise that, yes, this technology is great and it speeds up it speeds up staff um, transactions, but also there is a vulnerability there. So they're, 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 they're making it zero liability so you feel safe using it. But at the very least, it's a hassle for you. Yeah. So what about all of those wallets that you hear about that protect your cards from being skimmed and you, you know you hear about people putting wrapping their cards in aluminium foil i mean isn't that enough yeah see that's uh well, that's, a, that's a good thing that's a that's a good question i guess we developed armor um, card because when we were first looking at this this i guess rollout of rfid into our lives i was doing a lot of research and there was a lot of um white hack hackers yep. where they go on or penetration penetration testers um, testing these wallets and how how secure they were, yeah, yeah. and and basically you buy one, you think it's going to protect you exactly. from people skimming you from a distance. Exactly, and so there was a lot of stuff out there showing that they're questionable on how good they are, and that got me thinking or got us thinking about how we, how can we do this? I wasn't happy with our technology or our personal data being in these devices that may not work and yeah. protect us. So we've decided to tackle the issue differently, yeah. and. Those wallets and credit card sleeves that you have to individually wrap your credit cards in, sort of counterintuitive anyway, so that it defeats the purpose of tap and go. Yeah. But we call them passive. Yeah. So what they try to do is they try to block or shield a reader from hitting a signal to your cards. So you, to the right. chip and that can Correct. Yeah. So they try to block it. Now, what's been shown by these penetration testers is that if someone boosts the strength of their reader, and pumps an antenna on it, it can often penetrate those easily. Yeah. So I mean, you need to have like a lead lead suit, like Superman or something. Exactly. You know, you know which you're not going to do. We, gonna... we, exactly. It's still got to be usable, and you still want the convenience of this great. Yeah. You know, tap and goes great. I use it all the time. Yeah. Um, so what we did is we looked at it. How can we tackle this sort of invisible crime, this technology-driven crime with technology? And how we did that was instead of a passive device trying to block or shield it, we electronically or armor card electronically jams the frequency that they communicate over. And, so what, and what is that frequency? 13.56 megahertz. Yeah. So you'll find that your contactless credit cards, your e-passports, um, your uh, Opal, Opal cards or, or, or your travel cards are all working on this frequency and they use that frequency because your body emits a frequency and that frequency doesn't interfere, with, your body doesn't interfere with it. Yeah. So it's the most common frequency for yeah. contactless devices. Mm -hmm. And so the risk, I guess, for us was that, oh, we weren't really happy with our own private data being out there with questionable security. So we've come up and we're the only product, and it's an Australian invention, we electronically jam that communication link. So you're sending a 13.56 hertz signal yep. when it detects an RFID reading it yep. and, and blocks it. It jams it. It doesn't block, it jams. So it just floods the reader and the, fleet, the reader, the RFID reader doesn't know what to do and just can shut down or just won't, won't be able to read any of your card details. Sure. Now so as an example, with, yeah. um, with, with my armor card in my wallet here, mm -hmm. it's got a jamming proximity of about 50 mil either side of the so card. Five centimeters. Yep, five centimeters either side of the card. So I've got a three-fold wallet. Yep. It will protect everything in that wallet. Okay, and if I want to use tap and go, and we all know how convenient tap and go is, I mean, yeah. I use it every day multiple times, yeah. but I'm also safe with an armor card. I can still temporarily disable the jamming feature of the armor card by this gold button. Yeah. Temporarily disables the jamming, and you can just tap your wallet as per normal, and it will it will uh, let the transaction go through. So let's just pass the card for one second. Sure. I just want to show the people here on the uh, who are watching on the video. That is, let me just see if I can focus this here. That's the card there. And you can see that it says over here active jamming and uh, as you've explained to me before when the card is actively jamming uh, an RFID reader be it the one in the store or someone that's scamming uh, skimming you you'll see like a red light up top here that's correct and then if you wish to disable the jamming or do a battery test so that you can you know have the wallet in your in your have this in your wallet and still have the card be red you can just push this here and you can see that little green light flashing there so that's t that's either disabling it or it's jamming it 
sorry, when it's either disabling the jamming or it is testing the, battery. testing the battery to show you that it still has battery life. So that's the card there. And you can see that it's actually credit card size. How thick is it? Oh, it's, you know, it's, it's marginally bigger than a credit card. Yeah, I mean, you can see the actual, the black part is credit card. Yep. And there's just a tiny little uh, extra part on the side, which must house the battery and the electronics. Uh, the, yeah, that's right. So let's pass that back to you. Then. So the, the good thing about, I guess, our solution is, A, we're the first active solution and we electronically jam that communication link. But the, the beautiful thing is, is that you can use this in any wallet that you buy. I'm not asking you to go and buy an ugly wallet or anything like that. You can use it in any wallet. You can use it when you travel with your passports. One card is a solution for it all. And I guess that's a great a great thing. You know, I have to buy different wallets or different different things for every time I travel or, or, or for my family. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing. Most of those other uh, companies are saying you have to buy this particular wallet or you've got to buy yep. these things. And, you know, they're, they're trying to make it sound like it's, it's very cool and it protects you, but I like my existing wallet. Well, I just it. want to keep using it. That's right. <laughs> so, you've told us a bit about the, the history of, of why you uh, wanted to create it, but yep. what were the challenges in actually making this and getting it into a, you know a credit card size so slim? Oh, look, I mean, one of the challenges. I mean, it's been a, it's been a you know a long journey for about you know almost three years yeah. from idea, I guess, to to Reality. conception to yeah. commercialization. Yeah. And you know, part of the challenge was getting it so thin, and that and those batteries. And the and the microcontrollers and all the technology that's involved was it's, it's quite a it was quite a you know an exercise trying yeah. to get it in there to keep the profile of the card so thin, um, and I guess you know that would that that's you know we did a lot of testing in beta testing and we've we've finally got to it where it's where we're happy with the product and yeah it's it's been a, a good journey. I so guess. does it have replaceable batteries? Not at the moment. We couldn't find a replaceable battery. Uh, that would be so slim at that point. Yeah. But in so, the R and D, in the R and D of our product, obviously we've got a, a, a an R and D pipeline. I let me say, I yeah. guess we've got. You know, we're looking into rechargeable models coming in the future, and also teaming up with a Bluetooth and an app. Um, where potentially we could be linking things together. Sure, so, but that's all the future. At the yeah. moment, you have a card that works. What's the so? How long do you expect the battery life to last? Well, the battery the battery lasts for two years. Yep. Okay. And, and basically, based, we're, on, we're, based on based on powering up ten times a day. Now, I don't think you're going to get skimmed ten times a day, or you're going to use the the disable feature ten times a day. So that's based on ten times. So a it day, could so. last years longer. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And like you know, even if you, if you, if your armor card doesn't go near the reader, it's no reason for it to power up. Therefore, it's not using battery. Sure. So if you just take your credit card out and tap away from the armor card near yeah. the reader, it's no reason for it to power up. So then, of course, the question is, what does it cost, and how does it compare with the cost of those wallets? Yep. Well, the, the cost of uh, armor card is fifty nine ninety five, mm -hmm. and you can get them at JB Hi Fi, uh, Vodafone stores around Australia, and as well as Harvey Norman. And also online at our website, armacard.com.au. And look, it's it's one of those things where people people think, oh, it'll never happen to me. Yeah. But for that sort of price, and for the less than a cup of coffee a month, you can be secure and not have to worry about it. And that's and based over you know a cup of coffee a month over two uh, years. Over two years, yeah. Which is which the card could last longer. And what, I mean, what are the wallets cost? Isn't it something similar? Oh, look, wallets can be anything from you know fifty to seventy to a hundred and something dollars. It depends yeah. if you're getting something you know, something nice. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and you know, again, it's it's. It's a matter of choice, and you can use whatever wallet you like. And are you and finding people are buying like one for themselves, one for their partner, one for yeah. their kids? I mean, look, sixty percent of the, the 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 sales now from the site are coming from the US. Yeah. Um, because I think you know US are predisposed to a little bit of this. They've been out there for a little while. Um, but yeah, people are buying multiple for the family, and especially if you're traveling. I mean, we're getting a lot of people who are traveling, and and our feedback talking with travel agents as well. You know, there a lot of people are getting them for traveling. Yeah, and just holding them with their passports, putting yep. them in the middle, and might have family, yep. Yep. couple Bang. of passports on one side, a couple yep. of passports That's on the other right. side. And, we'll protect and, them. and what's the warranty? Of the on the warranty is for 12 months. Yeah. So we fully stand behind the product. Any problems, you know, we, we stand 100% behind the product and the technology. So, you know, just to change gears a little bit, how do you think RFID cards will evolve in the future? And where's all this identification going? Yeah, I think, you know, the, the, the main issue, I think, is that this tech, I mean, look, this technology is great, it's convenient. Yeah. Um, but what's what we're seeing and what we've been researching, we've got a finger on the pulse here. It's, you know, we're looking at it. You look in the US, they've got enhanced driver's licenses where you can go across border 
into Canada or into Mexico without even having your passport, they can read you from 30 feet away yeah. as you come up to a toll booth. That, that's, that's reading RFIDs from a distance. That's correct. <laughs> the government's doing it. That's right, that's right. Uh, you look at the uh, EU, citizen yeah. cards, 450 million in circulation, all with this technology running on this frequency. Yeah. It's only a matter of time. Social, uh, Medicare, social security, all that sort of stuff is gonna be moving this way. Um, the, the, the issue is, is not just your credit card and the $100 that you get skimmed, it's identity theft and people and criminals profiling you with your personal data and then going and getting a loan in your name in identity theft, which I can guarantee you the banks won't cover that. Yeah. So it's profiling. And I guess, you know, I, we, we, in this technology driven world, we've got to start looking after our own privacy because gone are the days where you had to be public. Yeah. Now we're public, we've got to be you know, pull, pull back a bit. Yeah, I think so. And so what about building cards? Is it block building cards or do they operate on a different frequency? Yeah, building cards, are, they do operate on uh, RFID, yeah. but it's a different frequency. Right. So they work on a different different frequency that yeah. this doesn't block. Sure. So look, one of the things I always like to ask, which is, has really nothing to do with what we're talking about now, but it's just simply to share a little bit about yourself and some, some of the things you've learned. What's the best piece of advice you've, that you've ever received that's helped you to get you where you are today? Oh, look, I think probably one of the, one of the best bits of advice was um, probably from my old man. I think yeah. my father. He's told me he's told me to listen yeah. twice as much as you speak. It's because we have two ears and one mouth. That's correct, right? and and it can be very hard to do at times. But you know, it's it's a good thing. It's a good it's a good skill to have is is to listen, and then you can answer properly. Because um, obviously you've got a lot of things happening in your mind, but if you can show you know close those down a little bit and listen, then you can respond. Nicely. And I guess you would have had to, uh, you would have experienced a lot of people listening to you talking about Avocado and then going, wow. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, especially because most people don't even know that, that this technology is vulnerable. Yeah. I mean, the, the big end of town, the guys who implement this, the governments and the, and the banks, I mean, they're, they're, it's in their best interest to get it out there. and As quickly as possible. Yeah, so we're, possible. we're just, you know, we're just the other side saying, look, they, they may be right, they may be, but no one's come out and, and said 100% that they're 100% secure. So until that point, I'm protecting myself. Yeah. Well, that's good. So do you have any final uh, words for ITY viewers and readers and for your current and potential customers? Yeah. Look, I think the, the, the main thing to, uh, I guess, that I want to leave you with is that now in this, in this day and age, you need to start taking back control of your privacy. And this is the first, Armacard is the first step in helping you to start controlling and taking back your own privacy. Don't leave it to the big end of town. It's up to you. Look how many breaches there are. Look how many skimming devices there have been. It's up to you to now start looking after yourself. Well, there's a famous saying, if it's to be, it's up to me. And this is a great way of making that uh, That's right. possible. Right. Tyler, thank you very much and good luck. Thanks so much, Alex.